So little me started drawing when I was like three or four years old. I was really obsessed. I drew all the time whenever I had a thing to draw with and a thing to draw on. I'd mainly draw characters from movies, comics, yeah! I remember there was this one comic called Captain Underpants about this superhero in underpants and he was like this giant baby kind of and I recreated it into baby captain underpants maybe that exists I don't know all I remember is the opening scene where the baby farted so strongly that it flew into outer space so that was pretty cool. cool. Most people at that time supported my artistic endeavors and told me I was really good and should never stop. You know, little flex. I'd also receive like 10 copies of the same coloring set every single year for my birthday, which I would definitely not use, but it was still a nice gesture. So people kind of knew me as the artist and one day I would become Picasso or Da Vinci. That didn't happen. But being a shy person, it was kind of cool because people would just come up to me and be like, oh, hey, what are you drawing? Do you want to draw me? And I would just kind of be like, no, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to draw you. I just like drawing these like characters and stuff. So sorry for everyone who I turned down, which was probably like three people. I kind of like the attention of being known as that kid who likes to draw. Things started to change when I began playing my first ever video game, World of Warcraft. If you know anything about WoW, you'll know that it ultimately consumes your life. You are 100% in, and it is in you. Pretty quickly, I started to prefer playing WoW over doing really anything else. As my disinterest towards drawing grew, I also was able to find more and more excuses to not draw. Oh, I just... I don't know what to draw anymore. I want to draw these World of Warcraft characters, but it's really nerdy, and what if someone one day sees them? As a last resort, my parents suggested that I start taking art classes. I remember spending literally as much time as possible in the bathrooms without seeming like a complete weirdo. I would just go in there to, <laughs> to like clean my brushes or to go to pee for like 20 minutes. During the lessons, I'd keep checking the clock, waiting for it to end and I just struggled staying awake and after two years I quit. When family members would ask if I was still drawing I'd just kind of be like well a little every now and then um, but drawing was kind of out of the picture. But the artist is back, bitches! I am married to the page and the pencil is my queen! I fill the gallery of my soul with creations of wonder and beauty! Kind of. Yeah, I just started drawing again. I first actually got back into it when I was living in London. Uh, I'd spent a lot of time in my room, because the old knee was pretty bad actually. So I started doodling rather frequently. Bloody hell, that's about it, innit? <laughs> After wanting to make videos on YouTube for years and discovering Odd Ones Out and these other YouTube animators, I realized making animations would be a pretty good blend of all my interests. I started creating these little animations on my iPad hey, asshole. and then uh, torrented, purchased a very legal copy of Adobe Flash and made some more stuff with it. But then, rather surprisingly, Animation is hard, and I quit. Again. Just when I thought things were getting better, I'd have to fill in the divorce papers with my pages, and the pencils would burn me alive for my treacherous acts. Amen. A year later, after the next uh, shitty thing happened, I was again left with a lot of time in my room alone. I remember a particular rainy night where I was watching YouTube videos. I was drawing the YouTubers, kind of listening, but mostly just zoning out. I wasn't really thinking of what I was doing. I was just kind of going with the flow of it. I didn't feel any pressure to make the drawings perfect, or I wasn't trying to become better. I was really just drawing. And that reminded me of how I felt when I was a kid. I think that flow state was why I was so obsessed with it in the first place. It was a form of escape for me, an escape that allowed me to create things and express myself creatively. I'm the type of person who's pretty anxious, I would say. And that night, I just felt like as I was drawing, none of it 
was there. I wish I could say that after that I just continued drawing like a madman and I'm just like utterly obsessed now, but I've definitely managed to incorporate it into my life again and I'm looking forward to pursuing it further. Throughout all these attempts in my life, I think that there's a few things that I've realized. Working on any kind of skill, whether it's drawing, programming, playing an instrument, yodeling, yodeling. Is it yodeling or yodeling? I keep forgetting. It's boring if you just do the technical stuff, but it's also unrewarding if you're only working on projects. <clears throat> While working on technical skills is super important, we need to be reminded of why we're doing the thing in the first place. Creating what interests us and what excites us is really motivating. And ultimately, isn't that why we're doing it anyways? To be able to create what we love? I mean, I, to me that seems like a pretty good reason. Although at the same time, a big part of the joy of working on anything is seeing yourself getting better at it. If you just keep creating and drawing without getting out of your comfort zone and doing some of those boring anatomy tutorials or whatever, your progress is gonna be much slower. I think it's about finding a good balance between the two, or even just combining both. If you work on your technical skills, maybe you can use your favorite characters as a reference, someone that you <laughs> you like to look at, I don't know. And for your projects, maybe you can make a conscious effort to incorporate some of those principles that you've been learning through your practice. Having a community of people who are interested in the same things as you are is also super important. As social monkeys, we enjoy talking to other monkeys about the things we love. Have you ever had a moment where you've just met someone and you've been all like, so you've probably never heard of blah 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 blah, blah but it's the best. And then they've been all like, I love blah, blah, blah. I thought I was the only one. For any skill or niche out there, there's almost certainly a community who love the thing as much as you do, or probably even more, and are very willing to nerd out about it with you. If you go to like a college, your college probably has some kind of club where people nerd out about whatever the thing you like is, or if not, you can create your own one. You'll be surprised. There's some weird people out there. <laughs> The final thing I've realized is that I tend to compare myself a lot to other people. It's a pretty normal monkey thing to do, but it's something that really impacts me. Don't get me wrong, seeing other people's work can be very inspiring, but it can also make me personally at least feel very demotivated. I easily start to compare my work against theirs and worry about how long it's gonna take me to be as good as them. No matter how much I tell myself, oh, you shouldn't compare yourself to others, blah, 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 blah. The only solution that I've found has been to just spend less time scrolling through Instagram, crying about how pathetic my art is, and just spend more time drawing. Because ultimately, that's how I'm gonna get better. Yeah. 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 My voice isn't deep enough, God damn it. I sometimes kind of regret quitting when I was a kid and imagine how good I could have been at this point. But I don't know, maybe during all those years, drawing just wasn't so important to me and that's okay. If anything, it's made me value commitment more now. And I know that no matter what, I really just want to stick to something now, even if it gets boring or it gets challenging, which it inevitably will. Sometimes I also worry that it's too late now and I'll never be a good artist. I'll never be the next Van Gogh. It's funny because Van Gogh actually started when he was 28, you know, so I got another seven years on him. While I kind of doubt that drawing is ever going to be my primary or only medium because there's so many other things that interest me and there's so many other things that I want to explore. I'm still gonna do it anyways because I like it and I think that's a reason enough. I guess the whole message of this video is that starting or starting again is difficult. It kind of sucks to suck. Doubt sucks, regret sucks, never knowing where what you're doing is gonna lead sucks. But everyone goes through these same worries and doubts. The successful ones decide to say fuck it and they just do it anyway. I hope you found some value in this video or just enjoyed and I would really appreciate a like and a subscribe if you did. I recommend these channels and these videos if you want to start drawing again. They've really helped me out a lot. Also, there's this free art curriculum by Modern Dame James, which directs you to a bunch of resources. You could literally learn the entire foundations of drawing and painting, which is cool and very free. So, highly recommend it. Anyways, I'll see you guys very soon. I'll see you guys very soon. Bye. Oh, fuck. <laughs>
imagining how good I could have- <laughs> Welcome to my video where there was the community of people, um, god, bloody hell, that's pretty much it. <laughs> what am I doing? Yeah. <clears throat>